Shan Tumen. On behalf of Hong Kong Computer Society, it is my great pleasure to welcome you at the AISG webinar and the awards presentation, Ceremony of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards 2020. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tasha, the host for this ceremony. Today, we're very happy to celebrate with and honor all winners. The Hong Kong Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards, organized by Hong Kong Computer Society, aims at recognizing and promoting outstanding information technology, innovations, solutions, products, and applications that help the community to prevent, fight, and overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, this award intends to recognize and commend the outstanding information technology that delivers value while contributes to the success in gaining control over this pandemic. We're very happy to be here today to announce the winners of the award. I'm sure everyone knows the power of AI before the start of the awards presentation ceremony. We're glad to have invited Professor Andy Chun. Vice President for Emerging Technologies and Convener of Artificial Intelligence Specialist Group of Hong Kong Computer Society to give a talk about AI use in healthcare and AI use against pandemic. Let us first welcome Professor Chun to talk about the topic AI use in healthcare. Professor Chun, please. Hello, I am Andy Chun, Vice President for Emerging Technologies and Convener for the AI Specialist Group at the Hong Kong Computer Society. Before I start my talk, I'd like to first congratulate all the organizations that have submitted projects for the Hong Kong CS Pandemic Innovation Digital Solutions Award. No matter where your projects get an award or not, you have made a valuable contribution to helping Hong Kong fight the pandemic through innovation and I congratulate you for that. In this part one of my two-part talk, I will share some use of AI in solving some major problems with global healthcare. Many people believe AI is humanity's best and probably only hope in solving our global healthcare problem. AI's best gift to humanity might just be better health for everyone. In 2015, the United Nations established a Sustainable Development Goals, which is to be achieved by the year 2030. One of the goals is goal number three, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. And that includes universal health coverage, equitable access of healthcare service to all men and women. Good health is important because it impacts and contributes to all other 16 goals. However, achieving goal number three almost seems impossible unless we uh, leverage digital technologies and AI. The current situation with global health is not good. Well, 3.5 billion people, more than half the world's population, do not have access to, uh, to essential health services. To achieve United Nations goal for good health and well-being, we need at least 80 million healthcare workers by uh, 2030. However, we're short of 15 million right now, Unless we're able to train up lots of new nurses and doctors immediately, we need another more scalable approach. AI seems to have potential to alleviate this problem. Not only do we not have enough healthcare workers, but they are not evenly distributed. Third world countries have a disproportionate less number of doctors and nurses, even though the population is much more. The chart shows that more than half 57% of the healthcare workers are located in the Americas and Europe, even though the population is only roughly 20% of the world population. This chart also shows that the lack of doctors and nurses translate to shorter lives, i.e. the dailies. The healthcare problem is escalated by the fact that the world population is aging quickly. We just passed a turning point where there are now more old people, 65 or older, than young people. This means there will be fewer people to take care of the elderly. On top of that, the healthcare costs have skyrocketed. It is particularly worse for US. It has gone from 5% to 17% of GDP. Healthcare expense have become unaffordable in many, even uh, in the first world countries like US. 
Technology like AI and machine learning are highly scalable. Once you develop an AI model, it could be reused millions of times with very low incremental costs. This piece of fact might surprise you, but the third leading uh, cause of death in the US after heart disease and cancer is actually medical errors. Each year, a quarter of a million to over 400,000 people die from mistakes, and most of the mistakes are avoidable. This is from a 2016 study by John Hopkins and a 2013 study published in the uh, Journal of uh, Patient Safety. The types of error could be uh, simple human errors, communication problems, or inaccurate information flow. Many of these errors could be spotted easily by using AI. In healthcare, there is this concept of iron triangle, which refers to the idea that ease, easy access, affordable costs, and quality care cannot all be simultaneously achieved. For example, you can have easy access to healthcare and high quality healthcare services, but it will be very expensive. Alternatively, you may have low cost healthcare and easy access, but the quality may be lacking. Many believe technologies like AI machine learning can break the iron triangle, whereby general populations can have their cake and eat it too. Achieve easy access, low cost and quality service. Technologies like AI machine learning might be humanity's only way to achieving United Nations goal number three by 2030. There are many examples of how AI can help tackle the iron triangle. In this talk, I will only have time to give two major examples, the use of AI chatbot doctors and the growing popularity of telemedicine. There are many AI medical chatbots in the market and investors are investing heavily in this area. For example, Babylon Health, based in London, have received uh, over $635 million in funding and is valued at over $2 billion. These AI chatbots are very different from the simple customer support chatbots you commonly see on the web. These AI chatbots are encoded with rich knowledge of the medical domain using both structure and potentially unstructured knowledge sources that represent decades of human knowledge in medicine. Uh, first, full disclosure, the company that I work for, at uh, which is Potential Corp Asia, uh, uses Babylon Health AI chatbot, but we provide it free of charge to countries in Southeast Asia, including Hong Kong. One example source of medical knowledge is NOMED, which is systemized um, nomenclature of medicine, basically a structured encyclopedia of medical terms and knowledge that started uh, 55 years ago. It is used to provide a standardized way to identify symptoms and diseases so that medical professionals around the world speak the same language, so to speak. The 2020 edition has over 350,000 concepts and roughly 1.4 billion length relationships, such as relationship between symptoms and diseases. The NCI Meta Thesaurus is another comprehensive biomedical terminology database that provides a broad concept-based mapping of terms from over 100 biomedical terminologies with 7.5 million terms mapped to 3.2 million concepts. ICD-11, International Classification of Disease, is yet another ontology with over 1.6 million terms providing 17,000 diagnostic categories with over 100,000 medical diagnostic index terms. Babylon Health, for example, makes use of these and other ontologies, as well as input from teams of doctors around the world to form a probabilistic and causal AI model, <clears throat> which is called a knowledge graph. It has two such knowledge graphs, one to represent medical knowledge and the other to represent the patient's detail and medical record and history. The following short two-minute video shows how Babylon Health symptom checker works using Amazon Alexa to talk to a patient to extract symptoms and determine potential illnesses. Alexa, I want to talk to Babylon. Hi there, I'm Babylon and I'm here to help. To start, tell me what symptom is bothering you the most. Well, I've got quite a sore stomach. Sorry to hear that. Let's figure out what's causing your pain and how to treat it. Chris, where exactly is the pain? It's, it's kind of on the top part of my stomach, sort of in the middle. And how bad is the pain? Oh, well, it's not too bad. 
And does it come and go? Yeah, it comes and goes, and it's worse after eating. I see. How would you describe the pain? It sort of feels like a burning pain. Okay. And are you feeling sick? Yeah, a little bit. Have you vomited at all? No. Have you noticed you're feeling fuller sooner than usual? No. How long have you had this pain? A few months, three months maybe. Are you still a non-smoker? Yes. Okay, that's great. Have you been taking any of your ibuprofen tablets the last few days? Yeah, I have. Thanks, Chris. I know enough now to offer information on what may be causing your symptoms. It could be acid reflux or a peptic ulcer. I'd recommend speaking to a GP soon. They're likely to prescribe something called a proton pump inhibitor to control your stomach acid. I can then get this prescription to your home using your Amazon Prime. Okay, thanks Babylon. My pleasure. Thanks for using Babylon with Alexa. Goodbye. That was an amazing demo, right? Babylon Health is only one such company. There are many more. Using roughly similar approaches, for example, Ada Health is another and has around 11 million users. At first, it was developed as a tool to support doctors in making diagnosis. A couple of years ago, Ada Health decided to, be, to let consumers use it as an AI chatbot to understand and manage their own health. According to Ada Health, roughly one um, patient assessment is done every three seconds. It's quite impressive. We can talk to both Babylon and Ada for free, so give it a try later on when you have time. AI chatbot doctors makes medical knowledge easily accessible to anyone. But if AI doctors say that you should see a human doctor, in many countries, you can now use telemedicine to consult with your doctor via your smartphone. This has been particularly popular during uh, COVID-19. There are many companies around the world offering telemedicine services. In Singapore, one of these companies is MyDoc. This chart shows the rapid growth of telemedicine due to pandemic in Singapore. In Australia, for example, over 10 million people have signed up for telehealth services from over 76,000 providers. In total, over 28 million COVID-19 related telehealth services have been provided. In the United States, uh, the United States government made telehealth available via Medicare uh, temporary in March and um, telehealth skyrocketed from only 11,000 to 1.3 million in April, the Trump administration have now made telehealth permanent benefit in Medicare for rural areas of the United States. The British government also made telemedicine uh, available to its citizens adopted and adoption has skyrocketed as well. In this interesting quote, 10 years of change in just one week truly uh, represents the difference a week makes for telemedicine. Who could have guessed how fast telemedicine will be embraced by regulators and governments around the world. Cree is an example of telehealth service provider. Uh, it's Stockholm-based digital healthcare company. And it's one of Europe's largest. Over 1.8 million uh, teleconsultations have been performed to date. Health Hero is another example. It is London-based and provides GP mental health, musculoskeletal, and specialist video consultations uh, it has performed over 1.5 million consultations and, and the company only started just one year ago. Babylon Health, which we talked about earlier, uh, has, has also provided uh, telemedicine for UK's NHS in London and Birmingham. You might wonder what AI has to do with telemedicine. Actually, AI has great potential use to support doctors during a video call. In this demo from Babylon Health, it shows that AI facial analytics detects the emotion of the patient and gives human doctors suggestions for questions to ask. AI automatically displays relevant clinical codes for doctors' reference, as well as use natural language processing to record transcript of the entire conversation. 
the prescription is automatically extracted from the conversation as well. At the end, AI automatically composes a summary of the doctor's consultation note. In the following short two minute video shows how this process works. Hi Louise, my name is Dr. Kultag Archer. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. So I can see you've completed our AI assessment. And from this, can I confirm that you've been having dizziness for a few months now with some hearing loss and also some ringing in your ears? Yeah, that's right. Okay, you look quite comfortable at the moment. So does the dizziness come and go? Uh, yeah, I don't have it at the moment. Okay. And when you do get the dizziness, how long do the symptoms last? Um, a few hours at a time, I'd say probably. Okay, and does changing the position of your head bring on the dizziness? Sorry, what I mean to say is, do you get dizzy, for example, when you turn your head to look to one side or when you turn over in bed? Oh, okay, no, no. Have you felt sick or vomited when you get the dizziness? No. Okay, and is there anything else you wanted to tell me about your symptoms? For example, have you had any headache, any weakness, any numbness at all? No. Okay. According to our records, you also had glandular fever a few months ago. Has that all settled? Yeah, yeah, that was awful. It's, it's gone now. Great. I mean, just looking at the blood test results from back then, they all came back normal as well. Great. So I would agree with our AI assessment. It looks like your symptoms are being caused by an ear condition called Meniere's disease. This is cause, causes a buildup of pressure within the balance center. And that's what causes those awful dizzy episodes that you've been getting. Okay. The most important thing now is to relieve those awful symptoms. So I'd like to prescribe something called Procolperazine. Can I just double check you're not pregnant at all? Uh, no, no chance of that. And you're not allergic to any medications? No. Okay, so I'll send that prescription to your usual pharmacy. It'll take around an hour or so. Okay. Does that all sound okay? Um, it sounds a little bit serious. Well, as you found out, the symptoms can be really serious when you have them, but many as itself usually isn't, and it can be really well managed with the medication. Okay, thanks. One thing to mention, given that it looks like you do have many ears disease, this could put you at a high risk of getting migraines. So I'd like you to do our migraine risk assessment, and that way we can see if there's anything that we can help you to reduce your risk. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Great. Okay, so I'll just run through the next steps to confirm your diagnosis and how to take the medication safely. Early on, I mentioned that AI has the potential of breaking healthcare's iron triangle and making healthcare more accessible. The following slides are some examples of this. Africa has 10% of the world's population, 25% of the world's disease burden, but only 3% of the world's doctors. Ada Health's Global Health Initiative, which was funded in part by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, translated their AI doctor app into Swahili. The Swahili-speaking East African country of Tan Tanzania has a population of 59 million, with only one doctor per 25,000 people. Life expectancy is low, and a third of the population do not live nearby um, health facilities. The AI chatbot is not meant to replace human doctors, but to reduce unnecessary clinic visits by providing health information and triaging patients. Wanda is another country in Africa that is benefiting from AI doctor. It has a population of 12.3 million. Uh, the project by Babylon started in 2016 in partnership again with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Initially, it provided 1 million consultations, and now it has expanded to cover all uh, Wandans aged 12 and over as part of the government's community-based health insurance scheme. The partnership uh, will use digital-first approach to create Africa's first universal prime care service and making Wanda a world leader in digital health. The way it works is that patients consult with a doctor or nurse within minutes over their mobile phone via text messages or voice calls because many people do not have smartphones. Medical staff then use Babylon's AI doctor for triage and symptom checking. The service also allows patients to receive prescription, lab requests, and referral all through their phone. This allows patients to have greater control over their own health, faster treatment, and fewer trips to health facilities. Ping An's good doctor, 
has a one minute clinic is another example of making healthcare more accessible in rural areas where there are roughly only one to two doctors per a thousand. The clinic is basically a box with one half a vending machine for medicine and the other half a small booth to talk to a doctor via a video. Patients first talk to an AI chatbot to provide basic medical history and symptoms and the AI generates a diagnostic plan. It then hands it off to a human doctor for teleconsultation. The user can pick up prescription immediately via the vending machine, which stocks around 100 commonly used medicines. If medicine is not available, it could be delivered. This system is great for rural areas as being installed in enterprises, large communities, universities, chain pharmacies, and expressway service areas, etc. It is also expanding overseas, uh, such as in Indonesia, where there is only uh, 0.3 doctor per 1,000 uh, population. For my last slide, I just wanted to highlight that we need to always be mindful of AI governance. For AI to do good, we need to also respect data privacy and to ensure, ensure that AI is fair and not biased with transparency in how it makes recommendations as well as being safe and secure. So that ends part one of my talk. In part two, I will talk about how AI is being used to fight the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Chen. Thanks, thank you once again. And we're very happy to see how telemedications and technology is being used to deliver medical services around the world. Please stay with us as we cannot wait for you to share with us on another topic, which is AI use against pandemic later. Now it is the start of the awards presentation ceremony. May I now invite Dr. Ted Soon, MH, President of Hong Kong Computer Society to deliver his welcoming remarks. Dr. Soon, please. Professor Gabriel Lan, GPS, JP, Dean of Medicine. The University of Hong Kong Chairperson of PISA 2020 Panel of Judges. Mr. Kelvin Ha, Chairperson of the PISA 2020 Organizing Committee. Distinguished guests, awardees, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards 2020 Awards Presentation Ceremony. As Chief Executive State in her current policy address, the year 2020 has presented mankind with an unprecedented public health crisis. During almost one year of our fight against the epidemic, Hong Kong has remained vigilant and committed. She pointed out that the technology personnel of the government have been seriously exploring the application of research and development outcomes in related prevention and control work. The chief executive also especially expressed her gratitude to the Hong Kong technology industry for its contribution in the fight against and prevention of the epidemic. She stated that the COVID-19 epidemic has enabled Hong Kong to successfully demonstrate how technology can be applied to solve problems. In combating the epidemic, the Hong Kong community has made good use of local R&D outcomes to prevent and control of the diseases, adjust lightly health needs as well as commercialize these outcomes. PISA 2020 is organized by Hong Kong Computer Society and support by Office of the Government Chief Information Officer. The Government of the Hong Kong SAR and other professional industry bodies is the first award in Hong Kong to recognize the organizations of people who create and deliver the solutions and services that have significant contribution to the society to fight against the pandemic. It shares the successful solutions, promote the possibility of wider application, and collaborate across various industries to establish and common goal to overcome the pandemic. Although the process and format of the judging are different from tradition, we can make better use of technology and truly achieve digital transformation and smart business under the new normal. Even though we have experienced so many difficulties this year, I'm still tremendously impressed by the quality of the entries as well as the effort and dedication 
of our ICT professionals, including teams of youngsters from local secondary school in creating such innovative products. They not only demonstrate the great advancement of the industry, but also contribute to a better community. Their participation makes PISA 2020 a wonderful success. The winners will not only receive trophies of the awards, but also be considered for nomination to other international awards, such as Asia Pacific Information and Communication Technology Alliance Award, and so on by Hong Kong Computer Society. However, no matter they are selected, being the winner of PISA 2020, their achievements will be made aware by customers, organizations, the ICT industry practitioners, and the entire community. Here, I must express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee for the time and effort by the excellent leadership of Mr. Kelvin Ha, the chairperson of the organizing committee, the panel of judges chaired by Professor Gabriel Learn, GPS, JP, Dean of Medicine, the University of Hong Kong, the assessors, Hong Kong Secretarial, and all supporting organizations. Their contribution is much crucial to the success of the competition, especially under such a difficult time. Last but not least, my warmest congratulations to all the winners for their incredible efforts in promoting ICT usage and innovation for fighting against and preventing COVID-19 epidemic in various communities in Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Soon. Now, it is our great pleasure to invite the Chief Judge of Pandemic Innovation Digital Solution Awards, Professor Gabriel Le, GBS JP, Dean of Medicine at the University of Hong Kong, to deliver a speech. Let us welcome Professor Le, please. Dr. Soon, President of the Hong Kong Computer Society, Mr. Ha, Chairperson of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards 2020 Organizing Committee, distinguished guests, awardees, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you so, so much for joining us at this presentation ceremony of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards today. In 2020, the COVID-19 outbreak has really become a, an epoch defining event. COVID-19 has affected and infected over 60 million people around the world and has already taken well over a million lives. Economic activities have come to a grounding halt and this has really impacted the livelihood and the quality of life of everyone in the world. In Hong Kong, as a Hong Konger, we must give credit to ourselves in having protected our society relatively well compared with many other places, even though, of course, we're now in the middle of our fourth wave of outbreaks. Pizza 2020 recognizes and commends outstanding IT solutions that deliver value and contribute to the continuing success of our pandemic fight. The panel of judges is extremely delighted to witness strong participation in the awards this year. And after a lot of hard work and debate and discussion, we have come to a consensus to select winners based on the judging criteria, including value, innovation, technology, timeliness, and execution. As chair of the panel, I had the privilege of working with a highly professional panel of judges, and we were absolutely wowed by the ICT talents and their inventions for Pizza 2020 under the new normal. I very much hope that the award scheme will continue to flourish so that more innovative IT solutions can be innovated and created to prevent, to mitigate, and to overcome COVID-19 
and other epidemics and pandemics, bringing long-term benefits to everyone. Thank you once again for joining us today, and please join me in congratulating these most deserved winners of the awards. I wish you all a very enjoyable afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Leung. And uh, thank you for your hard work being the chief judge of the panel. Thank you. May I now invite the chairperson of organizing committee of Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards, Mr. Kelvin Har, Vice President for Community Services of Hong Kong Computer Society, to say a few words. Mr. Har, please. Professor Gabriel Lang, Chairperson of Panel Judges of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards 2020. Dr. Tashin, President of Hong Kong Computer Society, distinguished guests, awardees, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to join us here today as this online presentation ceremony of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Award 2020. It has truly been an honor for me to serve as the chairperson of the organizing committee of such a remarkable award that recognizing and promoting outstanding information technology, innovation, solutions, products, and applications that help the community to prevent, fight, and overcome the recent COVID-19 outbreak. PIDSA 2020 was a newly created award for local IT professionals. All Hong Kong registered entity with proof of business registration or students from local registered tertiary institutions, including universities and secondary schools were eligible to participate. The award has been backed by enthusiastic support from the government, industry association, professional bodies and the academia. It is wonderful to see a number of impressive IT innovation, solutions, products and application to participate in this meaningful award. Apart from the winners, I would like to recognize the contribution of many talented individuals who have made the award a success, which we had to overcome a series of uncertainty and soft issue of new normal under the threats of COVID-19 pandemic. My heartfelt thanks to all the members of the organizing committee and judging panel for their tireless support every step of the way. It is your dedication and professionalism that make the PIDSA 2020 such a highly acclaimed award. And of course, a big thank you to all the participants and winners for standing behind their great ICT inventions and applications, which were developed to fight against and prevent the COVID-19 pandemic. You are the people who make it possible for Hong Kong to strengthen its position as an ICT hub now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Har. We are now going to announce the winners. There are five categories of the awards, which include, first of all, Outstanding Healthcare Award. Second, Outstanding Tracking and Surveillance Award. Third, Outstanding Productivity Award. Fourth, Outstanding Education Award. And last but not least, Outstanding Student Award. First of all, I would like to announce the winners of the Outstanding Healthcare Award. There's a total of three winners in this category. The award goes to Hong Kong Communications Company Limited for their UVC disinfection robot. Congratulations. May I now invite the representative from the Hong Kong Communications Company Limited to say a few words, please.
The port that we submit for this award is a disinfection robot. Originally, it is working in a library to scan the book with RFID tests for stock take and location tracking. Because of the pandemic, it put down all the books, pick up UVC LEDs instead of 3D camera for obstacle avoidance and remote surveillance. Behind it is a platform catered for multiple robots, multi locations performing different tasks at the same time. Robot is not replacing human, it is protecting and serving us. Its name is Dark Knight. Dark Knight is really grateful today to the Hong Kong Computer Society for granting this award to him. In fact, he aims not only serving Hong Kong, but all over the world eventually. Take this opportunity, he would like to encourage all technical people, particularly young people, to look beyond yourself, to work beyond Hong Kong. Make good use of technology to serve our society. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations once again to Hong Kong Communications Company Limited. And the next winner in this category is Hong Kong Productivity Council for their innovation, No Touch. Congratulations. May I now invite the representatives from Hong Kong Productivity Council to say a few words, please. Goingon,我是香港生產的促進局,自衛城市部的總經理潘志健博士。香港身邊的是Edmund,佢是我們生產的促進局的工程經理。好高興,我們生產的促進局所開發的NoTouch無足星光機按鈕,是榮獲由香
for the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Awards 2020. We've been building digital health solutions in the hospital authority for nearly 30 years now. We've also learned a lot about infectious disease management, starting from SARS in 2003. Lately, we've been building up such innovations as Smart Hospital, Smart Clinic, and HA Go, our single integrated patient app. So when the COVID pandemic hit early this year, we were able to apply a lot of those tools immediately to help manage the pandemic. For instance, we have a complete list of all of our COVID patients, along with all of the clinical information electronically stored. We were able to spin up the community treatment facility in Asia World Expo from scratch as a first class citizen of the hospital authority in two days. We're also able to build up some innovations very quickly, for instance, in areas of telehealth, clinical AI, and robotics. So I'd like to thank my team for their incredible hard work over the last year. The war's not over yet, but at least there's light at the end of the tunnel. And lastly, I'd like to dedicate this award to my clinical colleagues, the doctors, nurses, and other care providers who are still today fighting the COVID war at the front line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations once again to Hospital Authority. And thank you so much to our medical staff for maintaining the system in Hong Kong and keeping, our safe, keeping us safe. Now we're going to announce the winners of the Outstanding Tracking and Surveillance Award. There is a total of two winners in this category. And the first award goes to Logistics and Supply Chain Multitech R&D Center Limited and Compathion Technology for their Stay Home Safe Home Quarantine Monitoring Solution. Congratulations. May I now invite representatives from Logistics and Supply Chain, Multitech R&D Center Limited, and Compathion Technology to say a few words, please. On behalf of the team members of LSCM, I would like to say thank you very much to Hong Kong Computer Society for presenting the Outstanding Tracking and Surveillance Award to the Stay Home Safe Home Quarantine Monitoring Solution. This is really a recognition of our entire R&D team, as well as an affirmation of the application of innovative technology. I'm also glad to see that our efforts in R&D did pay off, and LSCM is able to help our community with our homegrown technologies in such a difficult time as we are hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. I believe with the government's continuous support in innovation and technology and active participation of the industry, innovation and technology will play an even more important role in the future. Thank you very much again. We are very honored to have this chance to apply our Compavian Technology Limited Positioning Technology in this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. And we are honored to partner with LSCM and the Hong Kong government to fight for this uh, COVID-19. We hope that we can continue the technology for good. We can devote more for Hong Kong and uh, to bring the technology to different industries. And in this COVID-19, we can provide position technology and protect the privacy for every citizens. And I think it is important to have a solution to balance all the privacy, all the technology, and uh, fight as a team with different departments, organization, and university. And again, thank you for uh, Hong Kong government, LSEM, and Hong Kong University of Science and Technology for giving us this chance to share the technology to the uh, city. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations once again for winning this award. Next up, 
Another winner in this category is Wild Faces Technology for their anti-contagion AI suite. Congratulations. May I now invite representative from Wild Faces Technology to say a few words, please. I'm Ivy. Hi, this is Ken from Wild Faces. It is a great honor for our artificial intelligence-based anti-contagion suite to receive this award. We applaud the Hong Kong Computer Society for its vision to continue to drive Hong Kong's digital innovation during the pandemic. This system has been sold to many countries around the world, including UK and US. Unfortunately, we have very little interest here in Hong Kong. Through this award, we hope to bring more attention to the fact that AI can actually help every Hong Konger to strike a more balanced light in spite of all these very strict pandemic regulations imposed. Yes, our anti-contagion suite reduces operation costs by 90%. We identify people with a fever in crowd in real time and provide full traceability of associated suspects to stop further spreading of the virus. It extends just beyond fever detection to managing social distancing, providing contactless access control and evacuation management. It has been widely adopted in developing countries such as India, Indonesia. The ROI was four months just through the savings in operating costs. In developed countries, such as South Korea and the US, the payback period was less than four weeks. People need to realize that an artificial intelligence-based solution can be much more cost-efficient than a handheld thermometer. So the te te technology behind is WOW AI, patented on the move analytic, mean, uh, making use of all the moving IoT, such as walking robots, flying drones. We can mimic human intelligence much better to be able to deliver a very complex um, you know, project. So uh, last November, we have topped Gartner's list against 97 similar AI suppliers around the world. So we will definitely continue to strike for innovation in AI space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations once again to Wild Faces Technology. Now we are going to announce the winners of the Outstanding Productivity Award. There are also a total of two winners in this category. First, the award goes to Madas FMS Limited for their events go virtual. Congratulations. May I now invite the representative of Midas FMS Limited to say a few words, please. Hi, this is Jackie. Thanks Hong Kong Computer Societies for organizing this meaningful award competitions. Midas is honored to be awarded. Midas is specialized in integrating digital and interactive solutions to enhance the user experience. We understand that almost all events has been postponed or canceled due to the social distancing measures under the outbreak of coronavirus. As a result, business activities are affected seriously. Our integrated digital platforms, events go virtual, which supports the products, or service mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. live streamings of conference, interactive chat rooms, mm -hmm. business matchings, and post show data definitely can serve the business list in the critical times. Organizing and participating exhibitions and events is no longer limited by physical conditions and geographic boundary. We hope our service or platforms will continue to have the enterprise to go through the critical times and adopt to the new normal, and wish the economy will be recovered soon. Once again, thank you for Hong Kong Computer Societies for giving us the award. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again to Midas FMS Limited. Next, another winner in this category is Rice Robotics Limited for their autonomous delivery and disinfection robots. Congratulations. May I now invite the representative of Rice Robotics Limited to say a few words, please.
Hi, my name is Ryan Kim, and I'm the general manager of Rice Robotics, which is an autonomous robotics startup. Um, what we do is we have two robots. One does autonomous delivery, and the other does autonomous disinfection. Our robots can deliver and disinfect, as well as operate elevators, charge all by itself. Um, how we're helping battle COVID is our delivery robots, for example, at Lotel Island South, which is a hotel in Wong Chakang. Um, we have two robots there that are delivering to quarantine guests. They're delivering food there. Um, also, with our disinfection robot, uh, it's it's a you know more clear connection. Maybe um, we are helping battle COVID uh, by vaporizing, sterilizing fluid. So our robots, um, for example, at Moko Mall in Mong Kok. Uh, you basically schedule when the disinfection will happen, and the robot will take care of all of that by moving and navigating obstacles all by itself. Um, we're really thankful for the recognition by Hong Kong Computer Society for the Outstanding Productivity Award, um, and uh, we appreciate your support and the recognition, and we hope to continue helping battle COVID. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations once again to Rice Robotics Limited. Coming up next, before we announce the winners of the Outstanding Education Award and Outstanding Student Award, it is now time to invite Professor Andy Chun to give another talk on the topic of AI use against pandemic. Professor Chun, please. Welcome back to part two of my talk. And congratulations once again to all those who submitted projects to the Hong Kong Pandemic Innovation Digital Solution Award for doing your part in contributing to the fight against COVID-19 through innovation. AI is widely used against pandemic in almost every task you can imagine. In this talk, I will only have time to highlight just a few of the key areas. It is interesting to note that with COVID-19, it is the first time that AI is used so prevalently and across all tasks to combat pandemic. In a way, AI is truly saving millions of lives by expediting disease detection, tracing, diagnosis, and drug discovery. AI chatbot is of course one obvious and most popular use of AI. During early days of pandemic, call centers were empty um, and AI uh, chatbots have to perform the work of disseminating information as well as helping citizens understand what is COVID-19 and its symptoms. This is one example where the Austin, Texas government used IBM Watson and natural language processing to extract information automatically from CDC and WHO and converse with citizens in English or Spanish. The other popular use of AI is in screening for people with fever in large crowds. This is an example used in Beijing's railway system. With large, large passenger flow, it's hard for humans to detect individual persons. Using an infrared and digital camera together with AI, the system could not only detect someone, whether someone has a fever, but also their exact identity, names, and addresses. In the hospital setting, there are numerous use of AI to detect and diagnose COVID-19. The use of AI deep learning has been very successful to support radiologists in analyzing images. This is particularly useful as back then, accurate diagnostic lab tests for COVID-19 can take up to days. The image shows here is an example of one of the earliest use of deep learning in lung CT scans. The system was already in place in a Tongji Hospital in Wuhan, China when the pandemic hit. The system was initially used to detect lung cancer. InfraVision, <clears throat> which developed the system quickly, used data from initial cases of infected patients to repurpose and retrain the system to detect COVID-19. The process takes only 10 seconds with a 95% sensitivity rate. During an outbreak when radiologists are overloaded, having an AI system that can first screen and that identify high probability uh, cases is crucial so the infected patients can get isolated ASAP. Although CT scans are not widely used for diagnosis of COVID-19 in the United States, many hospitals in the U.S. have also been successful in using deep learning. This is one example from Mount Sinai in uh, New York. In this example from Northwestern University, they used basic lung x-ray and AI deep learning was able, and was able to outperform humans. 
Here, AI is used to speed up triage before test results come back, which may take hours or days. The AI program can spot COVID-19 in x-rays about 10 times faster than thoracic radiologists and 1% to 6% more accurate. Sometimes CD scans and x-rays might not be available. This report in Lancet uh, outlined how the University of Oxford developed an AI system using uh, linear and nonlinear machine learning to detect COVID-19 in patients admitted to emergency departments using routine clinical data that were available within one hour of admission, such as blood tests and vital signs. Compared with swab testing, AI correctly ruled out uh, COVID-19 in 97.6 of the time. This is a similar work from the University of Vermont and Cedars Sinai. They were able to predict probability of COVID-19 infections using routine blood tests which can help hospitals reduce the number of patients referred for scarce PCR uh, testing, which might take a day to complete. AI system has a high sensitivity of 95% and a moderate uh, specificity of 49%, which is very similar to performance of other commonly used rule out tests. Now this is something new, uh, but it's still at early stage research. Supposedly, this AI algorithm developed at MIT can detect COVID-19 by just listening to your cough using your smartphone. People with COVID-19 who are uh, asymptomatic can spread the disease without any outward signs that they are sick. Although uh, asymptomatic, uh, infected lungs will still sound a bit different. Although humans might not be able to tell the difference, AI can. The AI model correctly identified 98 0.5% of people with COVID-19 and correctly ruled out COVID-19 in 94.2% of people without the disease. For asymptomatic people, the model correctly identified 100% of the people with COVID-19 and correctly ruled out uh, COVID-19 in 83.2% of the people without the disease. With hospital resources scarce, it's important to be able to identify severity of cases early on. AI mortality prediction uh, can be Similar to previous research I mentioned earlier, this work from South Korea also used routine blood samples at the time of hospital admissions to predict mortality. The AI model combined deep learning and random forest using 28 blood biomarkers as well as age and gender as model input. The system has high sensitivity of 100% with specificity of 91.35% and accuracy of 91.51%. The most valuable use of AI is probably in vaccine development. Uh, the first task in developing vaccine is to identify a target on the vaccine surface. In the early weeks of pandemic, scientists from Stanford Institute of uh, Human Center AI used machine learning to figure out possible sites. Using neural network and linear regression, the researchers came up with a list of targets on the novel uh, coronavirus that was most likely to provide an immune response. These targets or epitopes or components of the virus that B cells and T cells will uh, most likely recognize. And this happens a couple of weeks ago. Google DeepMind's AlphaFold version 2 solved a 50-year-old challenge, which is the protein folding pro problem. Version 1 was all already very good, scoring an average of 60 out of 100 and was used for COVID-19 vaccine work. The new version now scores at 87. To find a target site on a virus, we must first understand the 3D structure of the viral uh, protein. Viral proteins are made of linear uh, chains of chemicals called amino acids, of course, which spontaneously fold into complex ribbon-like structures. Vaccine developers must first uh, choose targets on the vaccine on the virus's outer layer that faces outward, so that they are physically accessible to immune system uh, weaponry. AI programs like AlphaFold will allow us to identify targets more accurately. The system uses machine learning uh, model trained on over 170,000 uh, protein structures. Now that we have several vaccines, uh, people are beginning to get vaccinated. There will be a flow of adverse reaction reports. To help process all these reports, the UK drug regulator plans to use AI natural language understanding to read through the reports and make sure no details are missed. In previous vaccination campaigns, for every 100 million vaccinated, there are roughly 
50,000 to 100,000 reports of suspected side effects. Besides vaccines, drug discovery is also a very important area for AI. New drug development usually takes 10 years to do, costing several billion US dollars. Success rate is low, only a fraction of a percent makes it to the market. And even after it goes to the market, only two out of 10 drugs are able to break even. So it's very important that uh, pharmaceutical companies use AI to reduce risks and to save time and money. AI can be used from research stage to identifying targets and compound screening to preclinical in analyzing vast amounts of data, as well as optimizing clinical trials. However, for COVID-19, because of time, our strategy has been to repurpose existing drugs as they have already gone through clinical trials. Even with repurposing existing drugs, there are many drug candidates to study, as well as different doses. This is one example from the National University of Singapore that uses AI to find the optimal combination of drugs and dosage. With a 12 drug test and a 10 different uh, dosage, the parameter space consists of 1 trillion possible combinations. Using AI, the research team was able to reduce the space to half a million and allow the entire study to be completed within two weeks. Using AI, the in, in US team found that the top ranking combination is remdesivir, lupinavir, and ritonavir at specific dosage. The combination was found to be 6.5 times more effective than just using remdesivir by itself. Reducing spread through contact tracing and predicting spread in different cities can also benefit from using AI. For example, Google and, AI, uh, and Apple created an exposure notification API uh, to be used in contract tracing apps that uses Bluetooth without location information and preserving privacy. Google uh, Apple API is now used in over 50 countries. Researchers are now looking into using AI to provide even better contact tracing using machine learning to estimate cell phone distances from Bluetooth signals in different environmental settings, such as inside a moving train, for example. AI machine learning is also used to determine what constitutes close contact in terms of proximity and duration of contact. This might be supplemented by a simple questionnaire to see if the user is wearing a face mask or not. Predicting how COVID-19 spread is also important to help uh, health authorities be prepared. This is one example from Facebook AI, Carnegie Mellon, and Direct Relief, which uses public data and privacy protecting uh, protected data and over a dozen uh, AI models. Uh, Facebook AI developed a new neural autoregressive mo a regressive model that aims to this, uh, entangle regional from disease inherent aspects within these data sets. It uses spatial relationship between counties as well as knowledge of spread in one area to improve detection in a, uh, in a different area. According to Facebook, the model uh, are largely accurate and are constantly being monitored and updated. My last slide, just a reminder, no matter how much AI and machine learning we use to combat COVID-19, the best way is to stay safe with social distancing, uh, wearing face masks, and washing hands. Uh, with that, I wish everyone a wonderful and safe winter holiday, and thank you for listening to my talk. See you next time. Thank you, thank you, Professor Chun, and thank you for reminding us again the safety measures that we should take during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, we're going to announce the winners of the Outstanding Education Award, and there are two winners in this category. And the first award goes to Growth Limited for their Cloud On Demand Online Teaching Support Program for the Hong Kong Education Industry. Congratulations. May I now invite representative of Growth Limited to say a few words, please. Outstanding 
，然後咧就喺三個月之內咧，就已經有超過二百間嘅學校同埋教育中心咧，同我哋申請呢個計劃，而服務緊超過十萬個嘅學生嘅。而我有幾個單位咧，好想喺度趁機會多謝佢哋嘅，包括咗 Growth 嘅團隊啦，包括咗騰訊雲嘅團隊，亦都當然有 Hong Kong Ace 香港電腦教育學會。同埋咧，五間先到校咧，俾咗好多意見我哋嘅。而早一排喺 Facebook 咧，我哋收到啲家長嘅提問，就係話 growth 呢個字點解嘅咧？點解個 G R W T H 裏邊冇咗個 O 字嘅咧？咁其實 O 字我哋嘅寓意咧，就好似一個學生一粒種子咁埋喺泥土裏面，我哋等待佢發芽成長。其實呢個意義對我哋好重要嘅。我哋每一項嘅工作，原來到頭來都係為咗學生嘅成長。我哋經常咧會喺教育界裏面就教導學生咧要擁抱未來。我哋作為成年人，更加需要以身作則，喺呢個時候做一個好嘅榜樣。就算更困難嘅時候，都要迎難而上，努力咁去生活。咁樣下一代先至會對將來有希望。所以大家要加油，多謝各位。Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's true that education is the most powerful thing to change the world and the future. And thank you for creating such a meaningful program. Congratulations once again to Growth Limited. Also, another winner in this category of the award goes to Snap Ask Hong Kong Limited for their Snap Ask Safe at Home Learning Support Scheme. Video. Congratulations! May I now invite the representative of Snap Ask Hong Kong Limited to say a few words, please? Thank you, the Hong Kong Computer Society, for recognizing Snap Ask's contribution on the education field. We are very thrilled and honored to receive the Outstanding Education Award. On behalf of SnapAs team, I want to especially thank our user for the support and feedback throughout the journey, so that we can always make SnapAs better. I also want to take this chance to thank our product team, design team, content team, operation team, and marketing team. This award wouldn't be possible without all your dedication. So this award belongs to everyone in the team. Thank you once again, and let's make education better together. Thank you. Congratulations once again to Snap Ask Hong Kong Limited. Now we are going to announce the winners of the Outstanding Student Award. There are four winners in this category, and the first winner is. St. Paul's Convent School for their Laughter Catcher. Congratulations. May I now invite the student representatives to say a few words, please. Dear honorable guests, professors, judges, and fellow students, we are Team Laughter Catcher from St. Paul Convent School. I am Caitlin and she is Eleanor. We are very honored and delighted to have this outstanding student award. It was a difficult time for us to combat the pandemic, yet work together to develop the app. We feel very grateful that we are able to work as a team to overcome all the difficulties and challenges. We hope Laughter Catcher can make a positive impact to our society. We want to thank the judges for choosing Laughter Catcher, and we will continue developing our app in the new near future so that we can improve it further. Thank you, judges, again, and this is a great encouragement. And as this is the first time we have incorporated AI in our app, and we are extremely happy. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eleanor Chan from St. Paul's Convent School. The pandemic has made a huge impact in our lives. Joining this competition gave us a chance to think about how we could contribute to overcoming the challenges. Laughter Catcher aims to encourage everyone to practice laughter yoga. While maintaining social distance with the help of cloud and AI technologies, so that everyone can spread positive energy in this pandemic. Here, I must say a big thank you to my teammate Caitlin for all the coding that we did together in school. We must also thank our ICT teacher Mrs. Wong for her guidance, as well as our principal Sister Margaret Wong for giving us the environment for innovation. In the future, 
we will keep on learning and put technology in good use for the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. And true, it's actually quite important to spread positivity during this time. And thank you for creating such a great product. Congratulations once again to St. Paul's Conference School. And the next winner in this category is St. Stephen's College for their distance buddy. Congratulations. May I now invite the student representatives from the school to say a few words, please. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Chen and he's Andy Yuan. We're from St. Stephen's College. We are very honored to come to this event and be awarded. And we would like to take this time to thank the organizer for all the time and effort they have spent coordinating this event. First of all, let me start with the background. During the pandemic, teachers and students are not able to have face-to-face -face teaching, which ends with online teaching. In online lessons, there's a lot of problems such as teachers are unable to slow our study progress and unable to recognize students' needs, and also lack of learning atmosphere caused by the infrastructure interaction between students. Our solution to this problem is an educational app that we call Distance Buddies, which is an MC app that incorporates AI technology and interactive functions to provide an interactive, interesting, and personalized experience. This app uses AI technology to decide what questions are most suitable for the student, which enhances their learning efficiency. Meanwhile, by incorporating interactive features such as a share function, a leaderboard, and a statistics dashboard to the student, students can have a way to keep motivated in learning, such as in exchanging answers with their classmates and also competing in the app using the leaderboard. In the future, we hope to expand our project by promoting the use of the app to other subjects. Furthermore, we hope to add better tools to make it easier for teachers to add questions to our app. And finally, we hope to explore different algorithms to make our app more accurate and thus give better personalized questions to students. Once again, we would like to thank the organizers and the judges for their effort and time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. And I'm sure the students will be way more motivated to learn when they encounter such a fun and interactive tool. Congratulations once again to St. Stephen's College. And the next winner in this category goes to HKTA, the Union Institute number three secondary school for their green smart tablet sanitizer. Congratulations. May I now invite the student representatives from the school to say a few words. Hello everyone. We are from two students from HKTA YY3 Secondary School. We are honored to be here today and grateful for the opportunity to join this award presentation ceremony. Let me introduce our product to you. It is called Green Tablet Sanitizer. Recently, smart gadgets are increasingly prevalent in the society. Research indicates that the personal smartphones and tablets are 10 times dirtier than the toilet. The present presence of uh, commonly found bacteria like E. coli and uh, SARS may cause diseases such as food poisoning and diarrhea. Different smartphone sanitizers with charger functions may be present in the market, yet currently found portable sanitizers have limitations due to its size, which is not appropriate for tablets used in public. Therefore, a case of, tab a case of the tablet will be designed and modified so that the sanitization of the personal as well as the tablets widely used in public. In, in this project, a prototype that can sanitize the, the tablets will be made. Scientific research proves that UV LED light with wavelength of around 280 nanometer and 300 nanometer is capable of removal of bacteria. Hence, the UV LED light will be incorporated as the source of our sanitization and the solar panel will be connected to the UV LED lights as a power source. Thank <laughs> you. 
This project has become a reality with the continued support from many individuals. We would like to extend our greatest gratitude to all of them. First and foremost, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Hong Kong Computer Society for offering us this golden opportunity to join this event and present our product and our ideas to the honorable judges. This experience can definitely broaden our horizon. We would also like to express our heartfelt thanks to our supervisor, Ms. Wu Jenny, for encouraging with us the scientific knowledge and providing valuable suggestions and her patient guidance during the planning and development of this project. Additionally, we would like to thank HKTA YY3 Secondary School and all the teachers from STEM Club for offering us the opportunity to join wonderful activity and for offering the facilities for the continual growth of students. Thank you very much. And congratulations once again for winning this award. Last but not least, the winner in this category goes to the Department of Information Technology of Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education, Lee Wai Lee, for their product all screens. Congratulations. May I invite the student representative from the school to say a few words, please. Hello, I'm Pearly from the Department of Information Technology, Ivy Lee Wiley, and I'm currently studying higher diploma in cloud and data center administration. Right now, none of the online teaching solutions meets the real need of running online lab section and all existing online teaching solutions are just for an online meeting or one direction broadcast. Teachers have no idea to know if the students are really working on their assignments or just opening the online meeting app and doing other stuff. On the other hand, most of the students are not willing to ask questions during online classes. And the main difference between an online class and face-to-face -face classes is that there's a lack of interaction. To address this problem, we developed All Screens, an online learning platform that engages and educates students at scale. Additionally, during the pandemic, we added a virtual health and safety officer feature, which can do mass detection to make sure students are wearing their masks at all times in the campus. We are thrilled to receive this prize outstanding student award and we'll pay more attention and effort in the future and keep on improving our project all screens. We would like to thank our teacher, Sarah Swong and Kisan Jung for supporting us on all screens. Also, we would like to thank the Hong Kong Computer Society for organizing this competition. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming up with such an efficient tool that enables us to make sure that everyone is putting on a mask in the classroom. Congratulations once again for winning the award. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this awards presentation ceremony of the Pandemic Innovative Digital Solution Award. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank our media sponsors, including eZone, Hong Kong Economic Times, IT Pro and PC Market for their generous support. Last but not least, we welcome you to join us, the Hong Kong Computer Society, as one of our members if you haven't done so or signed up yet. You can contact our membership department for further details. Ladies and gentlemen, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you for joining us today and goodbye.